Well, with the backdrop we have here, you might think we're in the Swiss Alps. In fact, we're in the Kapinski Hotel with the ski Dubai behind us. My special guest on this occasion started his working life on the roads as a navvy for some of the time and started his musical career on a paper in Vancouver. He's perhaps better known as a singer, songwriter, business entrepreneur, activist, and if I've missed anything out, I'm sure he'll tell me right now. I Bob Geldof, welcome back. slope champion, I think, in this day. <laughs> <laughs> well, in fact, we wanted to get you on there, actually, and sort of do the interview going down the slopes, but... Uh... Paddy Donsky. <laughs> OK. Well, welcome back to Dubai. Thank you. You've been here quite a few times in the last 18 months, for yeah. various reasons. Yeah. Shows at the... Shows, chatting, yeah. stuff in general, you know, but... Um, uh, probably no more than anyone else, you know. It's one of those places that... Uh, are now on the map, aren't they? They're in your radar. Uh, you either stop off en route or you stop and do some business or you stop and play or you yeah. stop and chat. So, uh, yeah. uh, a place. few people have been stopping and having holidays. Jamie Cullen with the Jazz Festival. Cliff Richard was here for about a week. But as you told me before, you don't do holidays, do you? I'm not good at them. I do um, a month every year with the family yeah. and we go to the same place, yeah. which drives me nuts. But um, they love that place. and. That's sort of part of their year, but um, the world stops, Bob world stops for a month. Yeah. And um, I just go rigid with boredom, you know, if I'm not doing something. I'm not good at sitting by pools. I'm not good dressed in ridiculous clothes, sliding down bits of snow. So, my so we wouldn't see if you went on a personal holiday going up to base camp at Everest or sailing down the Nile, perhaps? No. Nope. Yeah. But if you did, what would you do? On holiday? Yeah. Um, well, I just read a lot, but I do that anyway. And uh, it takes about 10 days, like it does for everyone, to decompress. Yeah. And then you, f then you sort of get into the groove of that. And then picking back up, though, is easy. You know, I can't wait to get back and into it. I've, you know, I view it as the beginning of the year in September, really. Yeah. And you face it with a certain trepidation, but a certain excitement, too. And... Uh, uh, you know, if I travel, which I do a lot, um, I generally get out and see things and, uh, you know, purposefully go about doing that. So it really performs the function of a holiday, which is to just to recharge you and refresh you and to stimulate you again. And so traveling does that anyway. Well, you had an interesting trip beginning of the year where the Hay Festival, which is a literary and music festival in the border area of Wales, has a, a, what, a sister festival in South America? It's got a few sister festivals now. It's called the Hay Literary Festival, and that's because of Hay on Wye up, um, you know, North Wales and England. And uh, it started off as just this small little thing, and now it's fields. There's just fields full of um, events and tents, and the entire village of Hay, uh, which was an agricultural village, I presume, is now entirely given over to all year round to books. I mean, there's... You know, the cinema has been converted into a massive bookshop. The little shops are all bookshops. They do a huge amount of international business. And uh, the guy who started it decided to do it elsewhere. So uh, I've played there really since the beginning, or I've done talks there. If I had a book out, I've spoken there. And we did Segovia in Spain when it opened there, and now South America in Cartagena. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I, I really never paid much interest to South America, which is ridiculous of course but every time I saw pictures or heard people it sounded too much like Europe something I was too familiar with right. and of course when I went there I mean I had no idea Colombia was I mean really beautiful yeah. I mean ridiculously incandescently beautiful and Cartagena which is on the Caribbean Atlantic part of Colombia was is like this perfectly preserved um, colonial, Spanish colonial jewel. It's like, as I said, Havana before it got messed up. So uh, people don't go because they think it's dangerous. It's not. Um, and you can buy fantastically beautiful houses with stone balustrades and these gorgeous yeah. streets for 70,000 quid, you know, <laughs> stuff. It's just too hard to get there, that's all. Yeah, sure. So that was uh, Hay in Colombia. You're going to be in Hay this coming uh, Yeah, I'm playing Hay and Why. Yeah, again, I'm, there's a couple of gigs I'll do this year. Not many, because um, I don't like uh, doing concerts, really, if I haven't had an album out for a right. few years. You know, I, get, I want to play new things. And uh, so around October time, I'll probably start recording right. a new record. Um, sounds like it was a beautiful show or location in Colombia. I mean, you've performed in some unusual places. I mean, OK, Dubai last year was the Irish village. 
by the side of a tennis stadium, but you were in Bangkok at the time. I was at Mondo Bongo Album. You played in a Chinese graveyard. So I play anywhere. I mean, it's, it's what I said. I was referring back to you said, well, what do you do yeah. to rest and that? It's not rest. It's, it's, it's counter-stimulation. You get very bored doing the same thing. So if something unusual or new comes into your mind, it's very stimulating and refreshing. So it has the same effect. It's why I constantly read, you know, new mm. things you never thought about. And you kind of go, that's good. And you're alert to it. So what are you reading at the moment? Uh, really a lot of things. I've, I brought just one book, so I only bring a little bag on these one-offs. But, you know, it's, it's obvious for me, but it's uh, by the guy who wrote uh, King Leopold's Ghost about the Congo, which is I'd recommend as a book, even if you're not interested in that stuff. And this is called Bury My Chains, which is about the slave trade. And uh, it sounds cliched, me saying that, but again, he's a great writer. And But I will read poetry, um, biography or history, and a novel in general, I'll have them on the go simultaneously, and probably then some empirical thing like about, uh, I mean, this is really boring, but something like that's policy-wise about development or aid or something, because I have to, but it also interests me. Um, so that's what I do, and uh, I will, you know, the great thing about being in a band is that you get asked to go places, and in the, in the 70s when the Boomtown Rats were a big band. Um, I just didn't want to go to Australia stopping off in this little shack in the Middle East called uh, Dubai, as it was then. You know. uh, I wanted to see the places, and so did all the band. So we asked, could we play in Bombay and Madras and Bangalore and uh, Bangkok? And these were not places that had any infrastructure or for a rock and roll band, and they didn't know rock and roll. We didn't care, so they said, yeah, you can play in a in a graveyard, no, fine, who cares, what's that about, sounds good. And I don't know why I was there, but it certainly was, it was in a Chinese graveyard, and I've got film of it, and there was army guys with helmets and dark glasses all over the stage, it was really odd. But uh, uh, uh. Right, um, you're here in Dubai, Paddy Weekend, of course, so what does Paddy Weekend actually mean to you? Um, well, always in my mind, I've got memories of freezing in Dublin, and... Um, going in, standing up, or being put on my dad's shoulders and watching, frankly, the most pathetic parade you've ever seen. It largely was made up of trade union bands okay. and um, the Wexford Women's Knitting Circle. And the Wexford Women's Knitting Circle would sit on the back of a flatbed truck yeah. and go down O'Conn Street knitting. And that was it. <laughs> was it and, and three Boland's Bakery bread delivery vans. So you had two trade union vans, the Wexford Women's Knitting Circle, and three Boland's Bakery delivery vans. That was the parade. And then they copped on that the Yanks wanted to come back and look at this. So they had to jizz it up. So they imported American school bands, which was cool because we tried to pull all these American girls. Never worked for me, I have to say. So. Um, and since then, you know, it's become this phenomenon all over the world, you know, Patrick's Day parades. And I've played at lots of them. But, um, you know, I, again, it's a great occasion to go away to somewhere different and, and have a laugh, have a party. And that's always good. Chance to celebrate in Dubai this time. Yeah, of course. <laughs> He was pretty much 70s, and most people know him for his uh, ethical work rather than his music. For us to see Bob Geldof here as an expat living in Dubai for 14 years is fantastic. But we support Bob Geldof in every way for uh, Save the Children, Save the World. It's actually fantastic.